Welcome to The Leadership, a business-focused talk show brought to you by The Vested Group. We talk to entrepreneurs, employees, thought leaders, innovators, dreamers, disruptors, and even our own children about what makes us tick on and off the clock. Welcome to another edition of The Leadership Podcast brought to you by The Vested Group, a five-star NetSuite partner located in Plano, Texas. Uh, if you'd like to find out some more information about us, you can reach out on thevested.com or through Instagram and Facebook. Uh, today, my partner Johnny and I are having the good fortune of interviewing Joe Lang, a senior consultant at The Vested Group. Hello. Howdy. Hello. How are y'all? <laughs> Doing well, thanks. We are good. So, Joe, how did you wind up at The Vested Group? Well, um, I wound up at the Vested Group about two years and three months ago. I started out at a previous consulting firm, a large consulting firm um, that was all around the globe. Um, I was in the NetSuite practice, um, did that for about two years, and I was one of those consultants that you typically think about when you hear the word consulting. I was traveling every week, Monday through Thursday, um, all over the United States and even um, in Europe. And, you know, I really got sick and tired of that lifestyle. You know, once the airport became kind of the second home and, and you kept getting upgraded, um, being, you know, a 24-year-old was kind of a lifestyle I got tired of. And um, in, large, in a large company, I was tired of the, the hierarchical structure and the politics I was involved. So I really wanted to come home and do something more localized at a, at a much smaller level. Um, so I just started poking around. I wasn't really actively looking, but I was looking. And then that's where the Vested Group came across on my computer screen. And I just applied and went through the fun interview process of submitting a video, which I was a little thrown off about. But luckily, um, it was impressive enough. And so here we are. And, and it's, been, it's been great ever since. Everybody loves, yeah, for those of you that don't know that our, uh, the hiring process asked us for an inner uh, kind of a video talking about ourselves a couple of minutes long is what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it definitely catches you off guard. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably yeah. a little dry, but it's okay. It's a good, it's a good way to get to know somebody, though. Uh, so how would you describe, well, let's actually, let's start off by saying, how would your parents describe what you do, your mom or your dad? Well, I'm the youngest of the family. My dad's in his 70s. My mom's in her 60s. They're both lawyers. So they probably think that I am on the receiving end of their IT support tickets of connecting the computer to the printer. Um, but then if you ask, you know, my fiance or my brothers, um, they understand that I implement software that, you know, benefits companies, um, you know, and, and improves their business processes. So, okay. And what would you, if, if somebody came up and asked you, look, what do you do? How would you describe it? That's a that's a good question. That's a million dollar question. I know we paid money to have that, that <laughs> answer question or that question answered for us. Um, just from 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 my perspective, um, we come in um, and we implement ERP NetSuite software um, for clients to improve their business processes um, or enhance uh, current existing business processes that are unique to their company. Um, and with those business processes, that is how they basically run their whole company. Whether it's um, inventory management, financials, um, warehouse management. Um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. That's a good one. Pretty good. That is a good one. So I know that sounds pretty exciting now. But when you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? Depended upon the sports season that was being played. Um, believe it or not, I was pretty athletic. So baseball, football, basketball player was always kind of in the the realm of possibilities. Uh, I, I was actually a early bloomer or a late bloomer. So I was more athletic in my earlier years, and then people started passing me in that reality came to an end very quickly and abruptly. Um, so anything within the sports world kind of caught my attention then. So you're going to be just an all-around professional athlete? Probably, yeah, yeah one of those uh, football, baseball, you know, Bo Jackson, Bo Jackson yeah. Yeah. players, yeah, yeah. The lifestyle. Yeah. So you've got two professional athletes, two doctors. I know, this uh, is awesome, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what Cindy said off the top of my head, but I'm sure it was something interesting. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, so why do you come to work? Why I come to work? Um, there's probably two fundamental reasons why I come to work. Obviously, the people. Um, you know, there's a lot of unique people, a lot of smart people at the Vesta Group. Um, everyone has a unique path, but oddly enough, everyone wound up at the Vesta Group. Everyone has their own unique experiences, um, and everyone is here and fosters an environment of creativity, collaboration, and just supporting each other. Mm -hmm. um, you're never in, you know, your tasks, taking them on by yourselves. Everyone wants to be able to help you and, um, you know, really in the day-to-day -day tasks together. And then I guess the second fundamental reason I would say is just, you know, you always hear 
you want to make the world a better place and you found it, but you know, one thing I, I really like to do is better, you know, companies and individuals, you know, with our line of work, we, we really have that opportunity to allow companies to thrive, allow individuals to thrive within their positions by coming in and improving um, their day-to-day -day operations with our implementations. Absolutely. Wow, that yeah. is the most consultanty, consultant, yeah, that He's was like a couple of consultants. Yeah, he is so far. Yeah, like super <laughs> consultant, consultant answer. That's 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 consultant good. isn't my life. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you wish that people knew about you? There's a lot. I'm an introvert, so I keep a lot of things to myself. Um, I really enjoy art. I, I, you know, in high school and outside of high school and college. Ceramics has kind of been one of the things that I like to do. Um, and then also just watercoloring and painting. It's something uh, that eases my mind that separates, you know, work life um, from personal life. You know, one of the, during this whole COVID-19 pandemic thing, one of the things that I really took on was watercoloring again. I made that a Q2 goal actually to bring that back into my life. Um, so having that, you know, artistic creative side, um, we got a, a lot of people don't know about that. Wheel? Do you have your own wheel? I don't. I um, need to buy that. We just moved into our house and we have an unused back house. So we're thinking about making that maybe an art room and a karaoke room hybrid. So, so do you have an Instagram there? Like, where, you, where are you posting this watercolor? Or is it just for Joe? No, it's just for Joe. Um, <laughs> we have some pieces hanging around the house, actually, which has been nice. You know, um, you know actually seeing your, your work, kind of people commenting on it and stuff is nice. Oh, we got to get embedded over there. <laughs> Joe Ling, right there at the bottom. So you might have already just answered this, but what do you enjoy doing when you're not at work? I mean, anything aside from watercoloring? Yeah, um, well, art, um, you know, I, I really enjoy cooking. It's not really anything that I did previously to meeting Peyton, um, who's my fiance, who I'm gonna be marrying here shortly. Um, we cook out of uh, the defined dish and half-baked harvest. So cook unique meals three to four times a week. Um, and then anything out, outdoors, uh, like running, uh, like going on walks. Um, and then also, you know, as I mentioned, we just bought our first home, so a lot of a lot of yard work right now, a lot of home projects. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of a something I'm doing willingly right now, but I know it might not be as willingly uh, in a couple months. And the Texas heat makes that tough too. Know, you like do it in the morning or evening kind of guy? Uh, I do it in the the hot. hot no way, way it's rough. Well, it's better that way because then you can come in quicker because you can talk about how hot it is. And <laughs> it won't be as bad. Ah, so shorter gardening. Yeah, yeah that's a, that's fair. So how lucky would you say you are? Yeah, uh, I mean, I would say I'm generally pretty lucky. I mean, there's a lot of situations that require luck, right? So um, coming across the Vested Group job posting, for instance, is was lucky. Um, meeting Peyton was lucky. I didn't do anything to deserve coming across her in life. So there's a lot of circumstances that I believe are just happenstance, um, but then within those circumstances luck kind of disappears and your hard work and your work ethic then comes into play so i think it's a balance of both um of luck and um actually putting in work to make that luck you know beneficial so that's pretty fair all right so based on what you just said you put in a lot of work we walk outside this office <laughs> you find a 15 million dollar lotto ticket that rewards you for that hard work sitting on the ground what are you spending that money on so once I wake up from the heart attack of coming <laughs> across that, um, you know, obviously the most common answer, take care of your family first, take care of your loved ones first. Um, and then one thing that I've always wanted to do um, is start a charity foundation. You know, one, you know, one of the challenges I faced growing up was dyslexia. Um, I had dyslexia and uh, fortunately enough, I had parents that were able to provide, you know, special tutoring, special treatment outside of school that allowed me to cope with that and improve upon myself. And, you know, looking back at that, I realized how fortunate I was to actually receive that. Um, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be able to receive that. And then taking that even a step further, you know, there's children that English is their second language um, and, and they get tested in English, um, which is their second language. So giving back and starting a, you know, a charity organization that kind of sponsors children in less fortunate areas to receive the proper training that they deserve. Like I was fortunate and lucky enough to, to have. Um, so, you know, realizing that not everyone is going to have the situation that I had and allow them to at least kind of fight that battle like I did. We need to copy and paste that answer for like a Miss America, you know, Yeah, yeah that was you know? good. That's a good one. That's I've a good been one. trying to. It takes, and personalized. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. I don't like this question, but uh, okay. 
Here we are a little bit more off the wall. If you were, on, I guess it's not more off the wall than $15 million lottery ticket. No, but it gets crazier from here. <laughs> if you were shipwrecked on a deserted island and you had your necessities like food and water, what two other things would you bring with you? Two? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A trunk full of books and Peyton. And then if I could do two other things, a hammock and a margarita machine. Wow. So yeah, books. I would treat it as a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not books. How about an iPad so you can download books and movies? Okay, Ooh. but you you don't need the iPad can only last so long. It's maybe like a solar charger have to be That's on there true. too. So maybe yeah. a trunk of books. Yeah, back to books. Yeah. Keeping it simple. But you know, smart to throw in the fiance. When are you guys getting married? September twenty sixth. Ooh, Ooh it's right around the corner. That is around. It's like really soon, actually. I know it's been a it's been a whirlwind with all this stuff going on. So oh my God. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Did you also have everybody spaced out six feet at the wedding? Yes. Well, <laughs> I'm required to say yes. We're, we're in plan B right now. We're getting married in our backyard now. So oh. it's just going to be family only. And then we're going to have a one-year vow renewal in Colorado where we were originally supposed to be getting married. Oh, that's so. a good idea. That's yep. a genius. We've got a few yeah. friends going to do the same thing. Exactly like they're doing a small family wedding instead. But. Yeah. Um, if you could choose one song that played every time you walked into a room, what's that song going to be, Joe? So, I'm going to take this back to when my dad took me to elementary school every single day. It was either 1310 The Ticket on the radio or ACDC. So, I'll go with Hell's Bells by ACDC. Wow. It can be a serious song, a kind of lighthearted celebration song. Romantic ballad. Oh, right. Really everything. Yeah. I think I might go with the acoustic, the, the, the introduction. Yeah. Hmm. Just no words. Mm-hmm. Very ominous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of, uh, Darth vader -y. Yes. Yeah. All right. If, uh, if you lived in a perfect world, how do people communicate? Vulnerable. With vulnerability. Huh. You know, I think the more authentic, uh, the better. And I think we have a hard time being as vulnerable as we need to be sometimes. You know, we have shields up and blockers of what, you know, we think is the norm or what society kind of thinks is the norm, you know. Speaking our truth and, and, and being vulnerable, I think, would be the, the best way for us to communicate. Um, but I know that's hard sometimes. Yeah, that's a good answer, though. That is, a, that is an yeah. ideal world. Uh, and, and, indeed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> softening up a little bit. <laughs> I get it. All right. So if you were our CEO tomorrow, what's the first thing you would do at the Vested Group? Um, I think I would, you know, just have a, have a volunteer day. You know, I'd give back to the community. Um, there's a lot going on right now, and I think there's um, room for the community to have some positive um, in the world within Dallas and Texas and then even in Plano. So probably implement some sort of giving day. Giving day. All right. A little bit of volunteer stuff. A little volunteer stuff. All right. Give you a, give you a pay raise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the second thing. Uh, yeah, if you're volunteer to do that, <laughs> you're a happy recipient. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Joe, thank you so much. You've been an awesome guest today. Uh, once again, I'm Johnny, and this is Hillary, and uh, we want to thank you for watching the Leadership Talk Show. Uh, you can see more of our episodes at uh, thevested.com and uh, learn a little bit more about us as well. Uh, you can check us out on YouTube. Just simply search The Vested Group, and uh, thanks. We'll see you next time.